So, this song contains three parts. Spermatogenesis. Anatomy of the sperm. Anatomy of the male reproductive organs. So if we took the male organ and we were to zoom in to one of the testicles, this thing right here, it would look a certain way. So again, here is a representation of what we're going over. We're talking about this part right here. So if you see that, this is a testy, and we're going to zoom in, boom, boom shakalaka. So what you'll do see is you'll see all these little tiny tubules. And this is going to be the edge of the tubule. So you're going to have a base layer. You're going to have Sertoli cells. See that right there, Sertoli cells? This right here is a spermatogonia. And it's the early form of the sperm. Now the Sertoli cell gets stimulated by follicle stimulating hormone. And as that happens, it nurtures this sperm spermatogonia. And the spermatogonia end up, ends up developing. It starts losing its cytoplasm. It starts developing a tail. And eventually, as it gets towards the inside of the convoluted, convoluted tubule, you get a more developed and eventually more mature sperm, which um, you'll notice it with its small head, midpiece, and tail. Now, on this bottom layer, um, is this in between the tubules you have these other cells and one of them that you should know about are the Leydig cells. Now Leydig cells um, get stimulated by a luteinizing hormone and they release something called testosterone. Now uh, testosterone is an androgen, it's the male sex hormone and testosterone uh, helps develop the secondary characteristics for men. So you get a deeper voice, you get um, more hair, you get uh, your long bone starts growing because of testosterone. The action, that's the action of um, testosterone from Leydig cells, okay? Ugh. Next, we're gonna quickly discuss the anatomy of the sperm. So, in order to deliver this material, it needs to break into the egg. So, this cell has three parts. It has a head, a midpiece, and a tail. And looking at this head, there's really not much to it uh, besides the nucleus. There's also this part called the acrosome. Now the acrosome helps the uh, sperm break into the egg because when this sperm reaches the egg, it releases the material in here, and that breaks down the egg wall so that the sperm can release this nucleus into the egg. The midpiece basically is the engine or fuel uh, for this sperm. It contains a lot of mitochondria, which produces ATP, which is the essential energy molecule of many biological cells. So that helps propel this sperm forward. And this would be the wheels, I guess, or the tires of the sperm. It's the tail. And um, it actually propels the sperm into the vaginal ocean, 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 ocean. The sperm is the only cell in, uh, in humans that have a flagella. So what do you think about that? No other human cell has a flagella on it. My god. So coming back to our diagram of the male genitals, I want you to see a drawing I made and see how it fits in with the diagram. We are going to the last part of the video, which is the anatomy, simple anatomy of the genital tract. We start here in the testicles, and the sperm moves to the epididymis, where it's stored for about three weeks, about 20 days. It allows the sperm to mature and grow and become very productive citizens in the sperm society. So it goes from seminiferous tubules 
to the epididymis. It's called epididymis. And then this long part is vas. It's vast, but it's known as the vas deferens. It goes over the bladder, back under where it goes to the ejaculatory duct. And it's combined with um, other fluid from the prostate gland, the uh, cowper's gland, and the seminal vesicle. This mixture of sperm and fluids is a little bit basic because the female vagina is actually a little bit acidic, right? Uh, finally, the last part of the tract is the urethra, and then it goes into the vagina um, in a process called coitus, which is the penile vaginal penetration. So let's go through this again. We have seminiferous tubules, epididymis, vas deferens, ejaculatory duct, urethra. Thanks, James, for such a great question. I'll try to answer it the next few weeks. The next video will be on the female reproductive system. If you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, and I hope to see you soon. I forgot to mention. In the description below, there's some test questions to see how much you've learned. They're tricky. I don't know if you could get them. But you're smart, I know you can, eventually.